letter B on the uh, unfinished business, the bylaws, um, and this will be a little more yeah. involved, maybe. I don't think there is anything substantively changed from the first draft that went out. I may have broken down the principles a little bit. Just read these and they sounded pretty good to me. I was a little concerned about uh, special meetings and just in the notification, but then that was handled under the notification yeah. section. Um, and I, I'm probably going to suggest one more change on the notice. Um, we've got in here silver, they see um, principles 3C, showing that it's fully documented. That was your suggestion. The way I did this, I, sometimes it, I stated things almost twice, but it, it covered something different, so mm -hmm. it be real clear. There's something in the purposes, I kind of felt like uh, there should be, that we should also be advocating for its enforcement, but that was handled in yeah. another area. Um, of, uh, of the principles, I think, H. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's what it was. Yeah. But they look good to me. Um, hey, you, the one that you mentioned about the notice, let me see what it is. I think it's a little further on, it's 48 hours, which I thought was sufficient notice. So 67 and a half minutes wouldn't be enough time to, to notify someone of a meeting change? Is that what you um, would need? I would not be happy with it. Um, there's a page that starts at the top removal. And you go down to notice. Mm -hmm. Number two. And I'm trying to, in writing this, I was trying to hit a balance between um, being able to conduct business and being fair to anybody that wants notice. And I said, failure to provide a requested notice should not affect the status of a meeting. I, I just wanted to point that out, that that, if somebody could read that and have a negative opinion of it, that well, if you were promoting open government, yet you're saying that we don't get notice that it's all right. So I think about adding in there um, unintentional failure. I mean, yeah. So that it's still a responsibility on us to try to get the notice out. And this is to other members, right? Like board members. Right. Yeah, this is just to the to the people that join and tell us that they would like to be notified when we're meeting. Okay. That although they don't have a vote, they still want to be notified and attend maybe. So I was thinking to put an unintentional failure wouldn't affect our ability to do business. Yeah, I think that's fine. It's basically, it's basically the snooze, snooze you lose clause. Yeah. But I mean, it's, you know, it is what it is. But I didn't want to had anything in here that somebody could criticize the sport and it, without unintentional, it doesn't sound quite right to me. Well, I mean, the, the other way to say it is that, um, you know, best effort, our best efforts are expected in, in terms of notifying the members of members of meetings, something like that. You know, that's a more positive way to say it, but whatever. whatever. I would say just stick to one word if that covers it. What if, what if the failure to notify is intentional? Does that affect the status of the meeting? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that says that we can't play around. We can say, well, we're just not going to tell them. Because yeah. then we can't do business. 
I've seen this. I've seen <clears throat> this written in the um, Rona bylaws in quite a dramatic fashion by, by Charles Poole and others, <laughs> trying to make sure that everyone in the neighborhood knows about meetings. <laughs> Pretty, it gets pretty crazy. It's like how many times do we have to fly in the neighborhood, and you know, within what hours, you know, and yeah, <laughs> not for in front of a windstorm. Right, right. You know, it's like, <laughs> come on, <you> guys. <laughs> and did everybody catch on the? I'm sorry, I'm going backwards here. On the purpose and principles, what it takes to amend those. Yeah, the three quarters or the two thirds. That means that, that Silver and I have to convince at least half of one of you. Yeah. <laughs> so, if, yeah, if we have a multiple personality, is that you break yeah. the tie or something? Yeah. Um, yeah, I was actually. Um, my question, I know, uh, again, I know we've belabored this, I don't want to belabor this because I know we've talked about it at length last meeting, but just to be clear, qualifications for members. Um, no, this, this, that's when it needs to be. You know, we, membership should be open to any individual residing in or owning real property in the city of Richmond. It's pretty open. And then any organization owning real property in the city of Richmond. And I would like to know more about Part B, um, why we feel that's necessary. Owning or renting, would that be preferable? Well, no, I mean, why Why would, do we really want like any organization, any real property in the city of Richmond to be at this table? Well, they wouldn't be at the table. They'd be in the, they would be out there. They would be supporters. Non-board members. Where does it say that? That's. Um, or does it say they can't be board members? <laughs> yeah. Well, it, it, it doesn't say they couldn't be it, board members. It member. does, because they, they have to reside in the city, and an organization doesn't reside. Well, that might need to be more clear, because... If qualification number two, each board member should be a resident of the city. That's what's meant there. Right. Maybe, maybe each board member should be a resident of the city of Richmond, and not an organization. Not just an organization? I, I don't know. Yeah. Well, we could say a, an individual member residing in the city, and then that would reflect the language in the qualification. We, we say individual and organization. Well, what's, I mean, what's the point of having any organization and real property in the city of Richmond as, as a possible member of it that way? I think it's a stakeholder. Yeah. But why, why would we want that opened up to any organization owning real property in the city of Richmond? Why, I mean, we already have any individual, why do we, why do we, any individual residing or owning real property, why do we have any organization? What's the purpose of having an organization? I mean, the, you know, um, to me, Empower says, okay, well, we're an organization, and so we're going to be, we're going to be a member of this organization. I mean, that's, it's nice to say, take part, but of course the problem is when they start putting their tentacles in, and next thing you know, they want to be on the board, and. They, they have no control over that. They, but if, if we open it up. Can we, can we change the wording so that the board member has to be an individual and can't be the representative of an organization? That's what I would at least prefer. But well, that, that's what I'm saying. If in the qualifications for the board member, right. number two, each board member shall be an individual and resident of the city of Richmond. I would, I would even just put not a, be resident, not an organization. I'd make it very, very clear because I've seen too many, yeah. too much corporate. Well, yeah, you could have somebody representing Dominion saying who happens to live in the city, but they're really. Well, well I mean that's one thing, but but to say, to say that Dominion Power is a member of the organization and they want to then they want to get on the board, you know, as an organization, that's to me is. Red flag right there. <clears throat> no organiz 
organization shall be a board member. That sounds good. So each board member shall be a resident of the city and no organization mm -hmm. shall be a board member? Yeah, that's explicit. I used to draft laws. <laughs> so we're not getting salaries? Sorry, Rick. No. <laughs> No, y'all are out of here. <laughs> so, what about something that uh, membership should be free, or do we not want to stipulate that? As long as it's not stated. Exist. So we're saying on board. Would it be helpful, do you think, to have it to state it so that people know that it's free? That's something that can be. Is that can put, put in a marketing on a website? Yeah. You sent us, you didn't mean to send us, or? Because I had, if I hit the move right button, it puts the time into the notes I do on the minutes. And I, I was moving right on something, and I hit it twice, but I didn't see what was happening. I hit it again, and it had the time in the email. And then it's. The ghost solution. Expressing abuse or position will be in writing and approved. And that's just a majority. Right. Do we have a copy of Robert Schultz's Water Ladies Edition? I mean, I know. Uh, Strange you ask. The current edition is 11. I've got 10. City, the reason I know I was checking the city's rules of order, the council rules of order, and their rules referred to edition nine, which went out of, which became obsolete in October of 2000. So it's only 13 years out of date, or 12 yeah, years out of date. Sure. Yeah. I'm, I'm surprised we got it. When did 10? Ten came in in October of 2000. Oh, okay, so that was. And then now there's 11. Do you know uh, that 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 issue that I challenged, Crutzy on and on about uh, what was it? They were in a devoting. Or yeah, making a motion to uh, what, what were they doing? Were they continuing a paper or in the minutes or? Which one? Was it was, uh, and Graziano said they didn't have to oh, do that. They, oh, yeah, it was, um, yeah, motion to continue. She said that that's not required, but then the very next item was continued and they made a motion. Yeah, but then they <laughs> said you don't have to do that to the guy, so. Yeah. No. And that, that clerk, he's like, 
really just very bad. <laughs> yeah, that's a very nice thing way to say it. Um, yeah, he's. Uh, I mean, I think his reading has improved since he's. He's been started. doing a lot more reading uh, out loud than yeah. he's yeah. ever had to do in his whole life before. But I, I just got through checking yesterday. That's not his job description to be doing that. Want to run the meeting? Like yeah. He wasn't public Wait, even even at the council meeting to be calling for motions and votes. Yeah. yeah that's. That's, that's the presiding officer's job, and you can look through the charter and all of the ordinance with, ordinances for the city, and it's not in there. Uh -huh. He shouldn't be doing that. I was called going down home saying, hey, let's pick you up. Maybe they didn't think anybody would ever question it. I know. <laughs> well, it's a new day. Yeah. Um, Officers' qualifications, I guess the same thing I said before, maybe I've got a third okay. ways. I mean, I know it's redundant, but no. just for the sake. No, no, it's not redundant. Um, is there, on vacancies, is there any time limit as far as, or do you want to put that in there, or any time as far as how long we have to fill a vacancy? No, because, that, and well, I'll say no. Let me say I don't think so because the number is flexible. It's well, that the board's not. Three to nine. Uh, the no, the officers Wait, aren't. Are you talking about officers or yes. board? Yes. Well, some officers, I guess. The board shall appoint new officers yeah. if vacancies occur. Right. Okay. And there's there's no. It has to be within a year, and I thought. As soon as possible. Is the, I think be a reasonable interpretation. Because I, I mean, I know it's another. I mean, sadly, in a lot of other organizations, it's hard to find people who want to be officers, yeah. and it winds up being like, okay, I'm still the president until we find somebody, and yeah. then it winds up being a problem. Yeah. You never said that with the Oregon and Neighborhood Association, did you? I have. <laughs> I've been in this meeting when you said that. Yeah, I remember you saying that. Well, I don't remember one day. <laughs> Someone else, go step up. Cry myself king again. <laughs> Um, and number one under duties, I don't know if you already covered this, but um, the duties of the officers should be prescribed in these bylaws and the parliamentary authority. And I wasn't sure if there was missing there or? No, it, it's, it's an extra space. Okay. Um, like the secretary especially has duties described in Robert's rules about keeping minutes and things like that. You don't. You don't even have to spell them out in the bylaws. You just refer to Roberts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. makes sense. Also have a copy. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> no, my my tenth is well worn, so I've got to start breaking in on the eleventh. So where you have reserved under definitions, that just means that we don't have any definitions yet, and once we were to do that, they would get added into the yeah. um, to the bylaws yeah. based on voting under yeah. the and, and committees the same thing. Once I I took several different examples, combined them, and then once I boiled it down, there really wasn't anything that I thought needed to be there at this time. But that's where it would go if we set up a committee or whatever. Any other concerns uh, anyone has or questions or comments on the uh, bylaws? <coughs> Remember anything else that you were wondering about that you thought you wanted to bring up? Do we do we do we set, do we decide anything about the vacancies, the, board, the officer vacancies? No, that they, it says they shall have 
they shall be filled. And we, it says they shall have officers and vacancies filled. So I, I think a reasonable interpretation of that is as soon as there's a vacancy and you've got somebody who love to serve, you have to apply. And actually, a little bit more than that, you have to look for somebody. If we have four officers, but the board shall consist of not less than three members, how does, is there a, any consideration or any issue with that is um, the fact that we wouldn't have one of those, because that would technically be considered a vacancy from, a, from the officer standpoint. Um, well, your chair and vice chair need to be board members, but the secretary and treasurer, my understanding is they don't. Like if, if we had somebody that said, well, I'll be your treasurer, then we can appoint them as treasurer as long as um, they're willing to do it. And they would be a non-voting member? They, they wouldn't even be a member. Okay. They wouldn't have to be a member. Right, right. They wouldn't be a board member and would not have to be um, a supporter, although... Is that, that a Robert's that, that, rule of order um, uh, process that what you just described, or do we need that, to define that in the bylaws that um, where the secretary and treasurer do not have to be... Um, we could. Because uh, that would, by having that in, in here, in... And yeah, specific would then no, that mean that we I didn't have to answer my ask my question that I just asked. Yeah. Um, yeah. The chair and vice chair shall be board members. That's what I was going to add. Okay. Yes. That's fine. Yeah. Um, how many people are on the board? I mean, no. three, three to nine. Three to nine. Yeah, I guess it makes sense. I was trying to see if you wanted the vice chair to be open to any member, but it's fine. I think that makes sense. Um, as general provisions, is that where we get issued with assault rifles? Or? <laughs> is it one of those sort of open with, categories? With super magazines? Yes. Do we all get assault rifles? I, <laughs> I don't know. It's under, under, qualified, under general provisions for officers, so one of us is not going to have an assault rifle. <laughs> Assuming that there are some things in here that I've missed, and we'll just go back and fix it when it comes up. Yeah, I can't imagine that there's anything that you've missed that has um, that has serious ramifications for our ongoing abilities. Yeah. And some of our members can offer up and say, "Why isn't this in there?" Or something. Um. Well. Um. Make sure that there's the removal and vote of confidence, basically. Anybody else with any uh, current change thoughts? Wayne, can you go ahead and um, summarize the changes that would be um, happening to what you presented here? I have on the board qualifications. We added help to know these pages. One, two, three. Five, five. On 
page two, board qualifications, ad number three, no organization, shall be a board member. Um, page three, um, notices. Page four, officers' qualifications at the top of page. Add a number three, which would be the same as the other no organization shall be. And on a, right under that appointment. Two would be the chair and vice chair shall be board members. And two becomes three. That, that's all I've got. Would somebody like to call the question on the uh, bylaws as we have them here, along with the changes that Wayne just described? I'll make the motion that we approve the bylaws as amended and changes as described. I'll second that motion. All in favor of the bylaws and amended changes, please say aye. 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 The 4 0 votes continue on. Um, letter C on unfinished business website. <coughs>